this is Seventh Wonder's fifth album release. Um, it goes by the uh, title uh, Tiara. So uh, this came out in 2018. It's the fifth release. Uh, I believe it's only the second to uh, be a concept uh, following uh, their first concept album, uh, Mercy Falls. Um, so yeah, this released in 2018. It's um, the band's technically progressive metal, I would uh, probably describe them as. And uh, I've recently kind of gotten into the, uh, this band um, as well. Um, I have actually uh, heard of them um, like a year ago, if not uh, longer than that. And um, I tried listening to this album and um, I kind of rubbed it off from uh, just kind of the way it kind of sounds. It's very kind of upbeat and cheerful and there uh, you could uh, kind of argue a uh, poppy uh, to an extent but uh, listening to it again coming to kind of admire it uh, for what it actually is um, I've come to really appreciate it uh, the uh, vocals from uh, Tommy Kurvik uh, the uh, lead vocalist of uh, Camelot although where uh, he originated from this band and went over to uh, Camelot and um, the uh, musicians as well are absolutely incredible. Uh, the guitarist is uh, great. Uh, the bassist is absolutely fantastic. Uh, probably one of the uh, greatest uh, bass players around at this point. Um, he does everything finger picked. He doesn't actually use a guitar pick, so he he's like finger picking absolutely everything. Uh, he doesn't just do the simple uh, one string, keep the rhythm going. He is full out uh, running with uh, the guitarist at times, if not even doing his own lead work. Um, even one of the songs on this album, he actually does take the entire lead from the guitarist, and the guitarist is actually not in the song for the most part, which is um, pretty insane, really. I've seen that um, in metal uh, music, uh, the bassist uh, really isn't the uh, front runner ever. He's mostly there just to keep rhythm. So uh, I've come to really just appreciate the fact that this band is actually insanely talented. The drums, the vocalist, the guitarist, and the bass player are all phenomenal. They even have a keyboard player. You've got uh, key solos, guitar solos. The guitarist is usually actually uh, doing a lot of intricate technical um, uh, stuff throughout the song. He doesn't just leave it to the uh, solo um, aspect and just uh, kind of uh, does, you know, the typical um, riffs, um, power chords, um, just where the uh, verses and choruses are, just basically just keep a rhythm until it gets to the solo, then show something. Now this guy usually is constantly uh, doing intricate things uh, when needed. Um, he he obviously isn't doing it all the time like Herman the Dragon Force, but uh, there is a lot of great lead work. Like uh, you don't have to have Tommy singing. Just listening to the uh, this album instrumentally, uh, there is a lot going on. It's uh, pretty intense, which is why the fact that it sounds quite mainstream and poppy, and uh, yet it's so complex. Um, it's like uh, people who do complain about this album do and do call it pop it's kind of like you're kind of missing uh, the point for one it's a concept and understanding the concept you can kind of understand the uh, sound that the band's going for just this um, kind of you know effect that they're going with and just the fact that even though it's like oh it's poppy it's mainstream the fact is this is incredibly technical um, like let's face it Camelot uh, a band which is very gothic and um, quite aggressive um, don't actually play as technical as Seventh Wonder does the more poppy sounding uh, band and upbeat so you know just because it sounds more upbeat and poppy doesn't mean that it's any less technical this is really technical stuff so um, the album's uh, last uh, around the hour mark, I think it uh, just exceeds uh, the hour mark. Um, the first um, track, though, is an intro. So um, the first track, Arrival. It's not long, uh, thankfully. It's only a minute 30, so a minute and a half. And yeah, it is an intro. The band's not there. Again, the fact that this is a concept album that is telling a story... Um, Arrival does go immediately into the Everones. So if you do go straight into the Everones, uh, the first actual track, which uh, you can do, it's not like um, Arrival plays into Everones. Arrival kind of just shuts off where Everones just kind of begins. So uh, you won't get some like bleed through of Arrival. Everones is just uh, the Everones. 
so you can skip it um, if you so please. But the fact that Arrival is just that uh, one and a half minute, it do it builds up into the album instead of just going into the Ever Owns, where it's just like it just starts and begins, which I don't really like albums to do that. I do like at least some build up. And uh, with it being a concept, you can kind of say that Arrival is kind of world building. So um, Arrival technically does have a purpose to it, even though there's no lyrics and the band aren't actually really kind of playing here. Um, it does kind of tie into what the story is. So Arrival and the concept of uh, this album, uh, Tiara. So Arrival is basically uh, aliens. Yes, this album is sci-fi and some people will be like, roll your eyes, but uh, there's some kind of like deep messaging to this uh, album. It is kind of deep. Uh, there are some kind of like cheesy lines and there's again, it's kind of upbeat and everything. So there is kind of cheese to it, but um, it's still kind of good fun. And when a lot of metal albums are so kind of, you know, dark and depressing, it's nice to get something a bit brighter and more uplifting that doesn't sacrifice uh, technical abilities and just uh, musicality and great uh, musicianship, great vocals. And as I said, a powerful kind of meaning throughout uh, the album for what it's getting at. So, as I say, Arrival it is basically aliens coming to Earth. And this takes us into um, our first actual track, The Everones. So, The Everones uh, is basically the name of the alien race. So, the aliens are known as The Everones, I believe. I have gone through the lyric book, um, I have got a grasp of what the story is. Obviously, sometimes it's quite difficult to uh, kind of uh, pinpoint exactly what the story means because it's not like written out for you um, at least not incredibly clearly like an absolute idiot could uh, figure it out so uh, the majority of it I do think I've got the grasp uh, near the end I think I kind of lose it because I don't exactly know what happens to the main character um, but uh, I digress um, so the Everones uh, I always lose track of what I'm on about so yeah, The Ever Owns is your first actual track. It immediately just kind of kicks off. Um, it's technically a heavy song, but isn't. It's kind of weird. It's not soft, it's not a melody, it's not melodic, but it's not going for gothic, aggressive, or it's thrash metal, it's like Metallica, it's like Maiden. No, it's heavy, but it's got a very kind of softness to it. So um, it's not, the guitars who pl that play is not very aggressive. Um, it's heavy, but there's a lot of warmth behind it and a lot of bass to kind of dampen that kind of attack, that sharpness. So um, it kind of mutes it to an extent, kind of. So even though it is kind of heavy, uh, it isn't, you know, heavy, heavy metal, you know, the typical heavy metal that you get. It's heavy for what this album's kind of going for. And then when you get to uh, the verse where uh, Tommy comes in, um, Tommy's going for a very kind of uh, light um, vocal performance here. So in Camelot, even though uh, it's the same guy, it's Tommy in Camelot as well as uh, Seventh Wonder, he sounds incredibly different. The fact that Camelot, he sounds a lot more powerful and uh, kind of gothic at times. Um, in Seventh Wonder, he's a lot more kind of light and kind of like innocent in his uh, performance. So throughout uh, Tiara, he never goes very aggressive. He never really goes very powerful. His voice is powerful, but it's just the fact that it's pure, it's innocent and uh, bright. Um, and that is basically him. Um, it's a shame that it doesn't have the entire kind of like um, show of what Tommy can do because clearly uh, there's no song on this which um, sounds like what he does on Camelot so it doesn't show a lot of variation to him like all the different variations but still going from one band to the other it does show that Tommy is a very incredible vocalist the fact that uh, throughout Camelot he doesn't sound anything like he does in Seventh Wonder it sounds like a completely different person which just kind of just shows just how incredibly uh, dynamic his voice can be. So going back to this verse here, um, it's not uh, one of the actual technical uh, verses, um, I mean riffs that are played by the guitarist. He is technically just kind of keeping a rhythm and then getting into um, uh, the uh, kind of later part of the verse. Um, 
where um, the vocals are about singing about sending out an SOS. Um, there's an effect put on Tommy which uh, makes him sound incredibly digital to the point that you don't really understand what he's sen- saying. It's kind of like the Earth is kind of like sending an SOS out so someone can kind of help them or something. But I, I don't really know what is being said. I don't know if you're supposed to. Even reading through the lyrics, which I have, um, these aren't in the book, so I don't have a clue what is being said. And then we go into uh, the pre-chorus, and then we go into the actual chorus. So let me get this down. You've got the intro, then the verse, then the second half of the verse, which changes. And then you get uh, the pre-chorus, then you get the chorus. So uh, already uh, you've got a fair few uh, differentiating sections. And uh, the other owns goes on for over six minutes, I believe. So it's a long song with a lot of uh, changing parts. Although going back to the uh, second verse, it does kind of play out exactly the same until you uh, hit uh, pretty much the solo. So the solo uh, starts with uh, keys, which um, the keyboard solo is decent. Um, it's got a decent length to it, um, got some technicality to it. The guitar solo that comes after is actually the uh, disappointing aspect because uh, it kind of keeps to a melody. So it's like, I don't know if this is a solo or if he's kind of going for just kind of like a melody after the key solo, which is the only solo. So I don't know if he's playing to basically taking the solo um, after the keys or if he's just doing a little kind of interlude lead uh, leading back into uh, the uh, finale of the song. I don't really know. Um, as I say, the melody is technically maintained for a while, but there's these little kind of bursts that uh, kind of come through. But it's like, if it is a solo, it's not a lot and it's not exactly great. But the fact is, you do get a key solo, you do kind of get a guitar lead, I guess. Um, and there is some uh, good kind of riffing through the song, uh, not the best through the album. But uh, it's not too bad. As for uh, what the Ever Owns is uh, getting at lyrically in the uh, concept. Um, so uh, the Ever Owns uh, make it to Earth. So uh, they've come and said that they've been basically watching Earth for a while, probably since uh, the day that uh, Earth was uh, created. And they're basically not impressed. They've been watching us uh, since the dawn of time and uh, they're just kind of basically disappointed in how Earth um, and well, humanity has really treated Earth and uh, what we're like. Uh, the fact that uh, we obviously cause a lot of problems. Uh, we uh, live off of constant lies. Uh, humanity likes lying to itself by basically Earth is okay or this country's this or we're that and uh, we can do this. And we're very ignorant and uh, love to basically live in a hell of a lot of denial to basically just basically fist ourselves with uh, compliments. It's um, a bit ridiculous and it is basically a truth that is kind of uh, holds very true to uh, what uh, humanity is kind of like. Government and um, things, uh, each country uh, does kind of dictate to the fact that uh, our country is the best. No, our country is the best and government saying we are great while um, the people actually say no, we're not. Uh, our country sucks. Yet at the same time still saying their country is epic and then comes to its own defence. Uh, we're all over the place. We fight against each other. We lie. Um, we're pig ignorant. We think we're all that and uh, these aliens have seen that and they're basically kind of just saying that uh, they're going to basically end us because uh, it would basically uh, be good for uh, the rest of uh, the universe uh, to basically just wipe out our very toxic uh, planet here. So that is what the Everones is uh, really going for, and then that leads us into the next track, Dream Machines. So Dream Machines is basically a fantastic track. Um, the track ever owns is all good and everything but it's kind of just like it's just set up it doesn't really seem like the band's really pushing anything it's basically just like that's the simple setup song and then from here on out uh, songs just get incredibly dy- dynamic and there's all sorts of things going on so, and therefore dream machines is the first actual like pushing the envelope if uh, y- you uh, let me so um 
starting off with Dream Machines, um, it starts on kind of like an atmospheric sound and then the band then kicks in. There's some typical riffing going on and you can thinking, okay, there's a nice upbeat kind of riff going on. This is fairly nice and everything. And um, yeah, it's all right. But then the guitarist then comes in and actually starts doing lead. So uh, there's some like pinched harmonics. Uh, he, he's like doing his own thing, just doing his own little lead. It's nice. He's in the forefront. It sounds epic. And then um, he uh, starts there uh, to uh, kind of like shift back into uh, doing, you know, back into uh, the riffing before the verse kicks in. And then the way Tommy is introduced in this song, I always um, absolutely uh, love it because uh, it's basically just uh, one word that is on repeat, which is just what. But uh, it's in the far ground, so um, he, he's basically far away, and then it's just the whisper of what, 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 and he keeps kind of like coming closer and closer. And then when uh, the what gets right up into the mic, he then starts, so it's just what, 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 and then he starts going off into his song. I kind of just always kind of like dig that just because it's just better than just going, what is this reaction instead of going, what, what, what? It's just a kind of cool way just to start the song. Like, obviously, it's just a little thing. It's not like it's absolutely groundbreaking. It's like, wow, doing what, 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 what a fantastic vocalist. It's like one of the greatest. It's like, no, obviously not. It's just a little kind of effect. But I just think these little things always just can keep adding and building instead of everything's just the bog standard just put, doing these little tweaks and everything all add up to a mass like huge thing if you just keep adding these little things instead of just not do anything in the slightest so um getting into the verse um it does kind of uh, go again kind of quite uh typically again uh, so the riffing is again just like typical riffing you get uh, it's very kind of upbeat it's got a kind of quick pace to it as well and uh, just the melody is just um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, the melody of uh, Tommy is just uh, really upbeat because of vocally what um, is kind of being said, which is basically humanity's uh, perspective now, just basically like who are these guys and everything. So what is this reaction from the dark side of the moon? Uh, who are they and everything? But um, obviously he sings it again very purely and innocent. It's not like, what is this reaction? God damn it. He's not doing that. It's uh, still quite bright, but and everything and because it's kind of upbeat and fast and everything it's just got great energy to it I really really dig it and then um, getting um, into the uh, kind of like pre-chorus section um, you get a bit of lead again um, from uh, the guitars uh, underneath Tommy's vocals as well so um, it's not like he's waiting for a pause no he's gonna go do his own friggin thing bit of a pinched harmonic again then we get into our chorus um, incredibly catchy uh, chorus uh, we keep bumping uh, like machines. Uh, we live in the dream. We're immortal men. We are dream machines. Um, it's just um, he's just belting it. Um, it's super great. It's incredibly catchy. And just if you will please just focus on the uh, chorus here. So um, if you just uh, basically listen to the guitarist uh, throughout this uh, chorus section. So forget the uh, vocal work. Just listen to the uh, guitar work here and just focus on what is actually being done here. If you focus and listen, you'll hear the fact that he's actually doing pure lead. He is not doing um, just simple riffing. He's not just basically maintaining rhythm while the vocalist is doing his thing. No, he is doing his own thing like he is lead. So as I say, take Tommy out. Uh, he is leading the chorus, even though Tommy is leading the song. It doesn't take away from the guitarist. He's doing leads. He's doing the pinched harmonic stuff. Uh, there is a lot of lead work, great melody to him. It's incredible. He's constantly doing lead. And then in the latter part of the air chorus, it starts to slow down into more of a melody. And the guitarist is constantly continuing as it slows down. Instead of going technical and then pinched harmonics, it, he goes into a nice little melody, this nice little interlude lead with Tommy over the top of him as well. So just a lot of lead work here, which is uh, one of the great aspects. And then uh, the bridge section, it's a bit kind of softer and everything, and then starts building up. Then we get our solo. It's a long um, guitar solo here. Um, it's got melody, it's got speed to it. It's uh, varied, it's got good length to it. It's a solid solo. And again, just the fact that uh, the intro has lead, um, it's got great energy to it. The way Tommy's introduced is great. The chorus is incredibly catchy. The lead work through the chorus, the lead solo, um, the uh, pre-chorus having lead as well. Just the amount of lead and uh, talent and musicianship throughout, even though it sounds gr really upbeat and you can just relax to it, 
So this is the thing, it's accessible because it's so catchy and nice and pleasing sounding. You don't have to put a lot of effort into it. But if you do decide to do that, you will be rewarded as well. You can listen to it um, without putting a lot of attention to it, or you can and still get rewarded. There is so much there beyond just listening to it for background music, which you can also do. There's so much on offer, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. So as I said with uh, the lyrics here, um, you are basically from the uh, human's perspective now, which is uh, basically uh, pig ignorance. Uh, who are these? Um, what is this reaction from the dark side of uh, the moon? Uh, we keep um, bumping like machines. Uh, we live in the dream. We're immortal men. We are dream machines. So basically just the fact that... Um, we are great, uh, we've uh, done all of this. Um, I don't know if this is the track where uh, they're kind of boasting the fact that they uh, basically kind of built the atom, because um, they just kind of say, we did this, we did this, and we keep going, we keep going, uh, we're unstoppable, uh, we can achieve anything. Uh, we are great, the things we have accomplished, the things that we have done, so who are these guys? Uh, we, we're like God, basically. Um, so, pig ignorance, um, thinking they're all great and absolutely everything, uh, just uh, basically living in their own world, that uh, everything they do is great without any kind of consequences, and whatever consequence there is or any kind of bad, we just kind of uh, put that aside and everything, just focus on we are just great, and even if we do a great thing but it comes at a severe cost, we don't give a crap because we are great. So, yeah, dream machines. So this leads us into our next track. So the next track against the grain, this could technically be my favorite track. Uh, there are a few great solid ones like Dream Machines I do really like, but Against the Grain uh, I do think I prefer over Dream Machines. There's just a lot going on with Against the Grain. Because the fact that when the song starts you are actually introduced to a lead acoustic. Just wow. Not just a lead guitar but a lead acoustic so uh, something new and it's a lead so you get a lead interlude a little lead solo that is acoustic and then at the end of the song it finishes again with a lead acoustic solo and then you get a lead guitar solo so there's like technically like three solos you get here if I'm not uh, forgetting that there's a key solo I may have forgotten just because I'm more guitar orientated um, so yeah, starting off the fact that it's got that acoustic uh, uh, guitar solo and then you lead into uh, your actual um, intro part, getting into your uh, verse. Um, the verse actually starts uh, soft, so this is actually a melodic start to the verse. At the latter part of the verse, it then goes into your typical kind of uh, style of uh, this album and Seventh uh, Wonder. Um, sounds a little old school actually uh, the second half and then getting into your uh, chorus again the chorus is just absolutely uh, catchy it, it just wow it's just so catchy uh, going into your second verse um, it's actually heavier now so you take the melody out so it's evolved it's changed the song constantly it's just dynamic acoustic solo at the start then you get your intro then soft melody then um, a heavier verse, then you got your catchy um, chorus, then you get um, a heavy uh, uh, verse throughout, back into your chorus. Uh, the solo section um, is got a great kind of groove to it, um, so it's not really going for technical, there is technicality to it, and it's not going for a beautiful symphonic kind of melody at all. No, it's just like, oh, we've got a groove going, oh, a good beat here. And here we go, we're having some fun. It's just an upbeat, groovy uh, sounding solo, which is uh, great. Just the fact that we uh, get some uh, dynamics from our uh, lead work. As I said, Dream Machines, it was a bit more kind of technical with melodies. This one's a bit more groove. And then you've got your acoustic solo attached to it as well. So, you know, and then you had your uh, key solo for the other owns. Just dynamics, again, just giving you some... Uh, flavors and dynamics and showmanship and what they the band can do instead of I'll just do speed throughout the album and they'll clearly know that I can play blues because you know like how the hell are you supposed to know if the band doesn't really show that which is a problem I kind of have where they say oh they don't need to do this and they don't need to do that or oh, they're just great because you know it's like but how how great do you know how much have you seen they need to display it 
And so far, this band has been doing uh, pretty friggin' fantastic on that aspect. So, the uh, lead is actually introduced in Against the Grain. So, the lead is basically, if you look at the screen, uh, this little girl here that you uh, see before you. So, she is Tiara. And the album uh, is basically uh, resolves around her, as well as obviously the other owns, but it is mostly her. So, Against the Grain uh, is literally of that. Uh, this girl, Tiara, is against the grain. The second the song starts, it's like, uh, look at yourselves. Stop lying. Stop pretending. So she's going against the grain. She sees humanity for basically what they are. The fact that they do lie. The fact that we do have problems and stop lying to yourselves. Admit to your problems. Admit we have problems and overcome them instead of running and hiding from them. We have our issues and we shouldn't lie. Tiara's been brought up to not lie. So how come when you brought up that lying is bad and don't lie. Why are the people who teach you this friggin' liars? It's a bit hypocritical. Who are they to teach the young innocents when they are so damaged in adulthood? And how are we going to progress? You try and teach us something, but what we see is different. How is that going to affect the innocent? So, there's some great lines in um, Against the Grain. Um, I've kind of forgotten them, but there's some great lines of basically uh, the, around the fact of basically uh, you say this, yet can you look at yourself? You say be truthful, but can you look in a mirror and say that you are truthful? Some very heavy lines where it's like you are spitting truth. This is really good, uh, meaningful things that is real. It's it does happen, and some just great lines of what this uh, girl Tiara is saying. So, um, going on to uh, the uh, next track, uh, Victorious. So, um, Victorious... Uh, oof, um, Victorious is a good track, for all intents and purpose. But uh, when it comes to the chorus, uh, the chorus is catchy. It just simply is. It is catchy, there's no denying that. But it, it's like kind of what you get in uh, nowadays like uh, religious churches so instead of uh, the kind of gospel singing um, this um, chorus is going uh, we will be victorious we'll be glorious so glorious um, it kind of sounds religious to me kind of like uh, what they uh, do where it's like he's glorious and he's the light oh my god you know just really stupid things like that um, I'm very against religion by the way so if it ever comes up I'll probably uh, go off on one um, but uh, yeah, it does kind of sound like that, um, which is interesting because uh, it's a, n a different kind of dynamic for metal. And uh, even though the story of uh, Tiara um, does have a kind of biblical reference, because it's uh, kind of like uh, oh, what's the uh, book called? Uh, whatever Bible book, whatever the hell it is uh, of End of Days, uh, Tiara does kind of follow that. But obviously it takes uh, God out of it, thank God, and uh, puts an alien twist on it. So it's like, even though it does follow that irritating uh, stuff uh, to me anyway, because uh, I hate that in anything, I can't stand uh, religion. Um, the fact that it's got a twist on it does make it a bit easy uh, to digest. And there is some good meaning to it, so I, I can still admit the fact that uh, there is some truth to this. Uh, the bass player is very religious in all of his... Uh, thanks in uh, the uh, kind of like albums it's always my lord the holy spirit jesus christ i thank you and i go oh my dear god wash my eyes with bleach um because it's so annoying um so uh i'm sure he's one of the main writers so uh, he does put it quite aggressively into it and then i think the other writer is uh tommy kurvik um he never seems to thank God, so I'm not entirely sure if he is religious as well. I hope he's not, just to basically just dampen the amount of religion that's sh shoved in, because even the previous album prior to this, uh, there's some religious undertones, which is God annoying. I hate it. So, um, yeah, the album 
does follow a structure of a story that is religious but with a twist to it uh, the bass player is religious um, and Victorious does have a religious kind of sound to it uh, for the chorus um, but it's again it's different it's interesting um, and it is catchy so uh, lyrically Victorious is going along the lines of um, the fact that uh, I believe they're building a rocket or something to uh, launch Tiara to uh, go to the Everones to basically speak on humanity's behalf. Which is why it comes to where uh, we will be victorious, we'll be glorious, so glorious. But again, this is again the pig ignorance of humanity. We'll be glorious, we'll be victorious. We built the atom for Christ's sake. We can do whatever the hell we want. We're brilliant, we are humans. It's not like the Earth's dying, it's not like our species are going extinct, it's not like we wipe everything out that we come in contact with, it's not like we even hate and wipe our own species out. We are that brilliant and important. If we're that great, then murder must be absolutely amazing and destroying planets must be a good thing. I don't know, it sounds dumb to me, but that's humanity for you. So, um... Oh, and hating your neighbours as well. Just completely not a racist, uh, the human race. This is going really political. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll uh, leave my own uh, political agenda out of this now. I've got that out of the way. And religious stuff. Uh, to hell with all that now. Just uh, focus on the story here. So, um, yeah, they're just basically building a rocket. And uh, Earth is coming together, for once. Uh <laughs> Uh, to uh, build this rocket and they're just basically just saying they'll be victorious, the things they've accomplished in their history and everything. So uh, we can accomplish this, we can do this. We've done great things in the past, we can do this. And we'll send Tiara up there, she's uh, the innocent, she's the purest of us, and uh, she'll speak on our behalf. So this kind of leads us into Tiara's song, which is uh, a three-parter, so um, it's uh, the uh, part of the uh, farewell chapter. So you got farewell part one, farewell part two, farewell part three. And uh, the first farewell is Tiara's song. So uh, this is a really nice uh, track again. Uh, it's got great melody. Uh, there's always a focus on melody. A uh, great uh, guitar work throughout, as per usual. Uh, the solo um, is like a one-trick pony, which is quite irritating because it's like he starts and then he just kind of keeps it going. Which is there's a technical kind of passage and then he just keeps it on repeat. And the bassist actually does play it with him. The guitarist stops first and the bassist kind of does kind of like trail it for a little bit afterwards, which is a little interesting. So it's nice to kind of hear that he's, you know, there and getting his little shine because uh, he's an incredible bassist, even though I hate that he seems to just be all religion based and uh, he his entire life has been given to that. So it's like everything else about him has died for this. Um, again, sorry. Um, so um, yeah it's good to kind of just hear him because he is absolutely fantastic so um, Tiara's song um, is um, basically um, that it's um, Tiara being uh, sent off uh, the world kind of uh, sings for her um, uh, we sing this song um, for Tiara um, our one and only hope so it's like the weight of the world on her shoulders. So Earth has put their entire existence, their entire like existence on a girl. Like, here you go, girl. We're going to launch you into space on your own because e you're the best of us. We're not going to see why you're the best of us. We're not going to do any of that because we can't be fucked. We'll just send you to space to talk on our behalf. And then we'll just keep going from there the way we always have been. Because we're idiots. Uh, but no, we're going to send you off with the weight of the world. If you fail, we are all going to die. Good luck, Tiara. And this is just a girl who hasn't even lived yet. Who hasn't even experienced life who's being taught all these right values and everything, yet humanity constantly contradicts itself. This is the interesting thing about this album, just the contradictory, just the, the fact that it's so real and everything, which is the thing I really like, even though, as I say again, it's based um, on uh, 
kind of like a religious kind of concept, um, it doesn't kind of take away the fact that there is truth to it. Not that God exists, um, but uh, just uh, Earth people and there uh, are issues, which I really enjoy. So going into uh, Good Night, Farewell Part 2. Uh, so this is our first melody now. And uh, what a melody. Like, Good Night um, has... It's not technically a melody, uh, to be honest. Um, it's... Um, how to explain it? Um, it's the first kind of proper melody uh, verse. But then the rest of the song uh, does have uh, the more picked up elements. So uh, when the verse starts, uh, you get uh, some great melody, um, some good uh, melodic vocals from uh, Tommy, and then it kind of builds and um, gets heavier, and then uh, the rest of the song uh, kind of progresses, and um, it kind of keeps dipping in and out. So it's uh, one of the more kind of uh, proggy uh, songs, the fact that it's got kind of the melody and the heaviness and that goes on for, again, I think like over six minutes. So... Um, there's some good variation to it, and um, I'm not sure if there's actually a solo to this one. There may be a solo um, in this one, I can't really remember, but uh, as far as uh, lyrically what's happening, this is uh, from the mother's perspective, I believe, of Tiara. So, um, she's basically kind of uh, saying again that uh, the weight of the world is on her shoulders, and uh, this is my little girl, and uh, she's leaving me. Um, She's kind of my rock and everything. Um, I've been getting by purely from Tiara and everything, and now that she's uh, gone, I don't really know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'll, I can live and everything, and I just hope to see her again. Um, some interesting things is, um, throughout, is um, Good Night actually um, plays uh, some of uh, Tiara's songs. So at the end of Good Night, uh, you hear... Um, uh, together we'll sing this song for Tiara and everything um, which to me kind of seems like uh, this is her leaving so um, they're all partying and everything as they're, they're kind of you know um, launching her into space they're having a blast because it's like oh we sing for Tiara we're having a great time we'll be victorious we'll be glorious well this girl is alone in space basically um so um, I kind of like the fact that uh, there are playthroughs to kind of uh, connect these songs together as well as uh, narratively kind of pinpoint where we are in the story. So uh, beyond today, uh, this definitely doesn't have a solo, this one, but um, I'm not uh, too fussed on that because uh, the melody of the whole thing is just, oh my God, phenomenal. Um, the melody is fantastic. It's so catchy. It's such a beautiful song. Um, there are some cheesy lines in this, so uh, basically um, there are lines like uh, we'll kiss like in the movies and it'll be like a photograph moment and everything. So uh, yeah, he, there are lines like uh, in the movies where he takes his hand in mine, um, just like in the fairy tales and um, picture perfect and they're uh, singing about prom and things. So, lyrically, it's not very metal. It's uh, quite cheesy. But to an extent, I actually do really like it. So even though, yes, there's movies, there's holding hands, there's marriage and uh, photographic moments and prom and everything, a girl singing about her prom, like, yeah, um, I know a lot of people will be like, ugh, roll their eyes and everything. But you need to see it from basically the perspective of who's singing which is now tiara again who is alone in a spaceship so beyond today is basically what is gonna be beyond today she doesn't know she's been sent to an alien race who wants to wipe out humanity is she even gonna be able to return home or is she already seen her last moments of Earth, with her mum, with her family. Will she never see them again? Will she fail? Is she, after today, is humanity going to fall? Are they going to be destroyed? Because she failed. And then, 
even if they succeed, what's beyond that? All the things you could miss on by dying on this journey or the humanity being wiped out. She's still a girl. She's not lived. So um, holding hands, it's like I've never even had a date. I don't know what that moment's like. My first kiss. I've never experienced that. I'll never experience walking down the aisle and my father offering my hand. I'll never experience that, maybe. Because humanity has sent me on this journey, they may have killed me of all of this. They may have robbed me. I don't know if I'll get all of this. I've got the weight of my world on my shoulders, which she says, I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders. Humanity is all down to my success but I'm just a girl all I want is to just have these moments I want to get married I want to have that kiss like in the movies with uh, my first kiss my first love I want these moments this is what I should be focused on these are the things I should be looking forward to not if I'm even going to come back home, not am I going to die uh, today, not is humanity going to be wiped out. This is not something a girl should be thinking about. So even though the lyrics are technically cheesy, technically they're very deep. It's very deep. It's very disturbing to an extent, even though it's a beautiful song and the entire album is quite bright. This is deep. This is very dark stuff. No solo, but who cares? Lyrically, uh, there's some great heartfelt, um, heart-aching things that this uh, innocent girl is saying. And then musically as well, it is phenomenal. So going on to the next track, The Truth. Um, again, we uh, definitely don't get a solo in this. I am fully aware. And uh, this is the track where the bassist actually takes uh, front and center, which is fantastic. So he is playing like a guitarist. As I say, he has a six string bass. He doesn't use a pick. He's using all of his fingers. He utilizes all of them. So he plays a lot. And the melody he puts out, seriously, just listen to the truth. If you're not really a fan of the bass or just want to see how good a bass can sound, listen to uh, the truth. The melody is just absolutely insane of what he can do. It's so warm, like you to think bass, oh, there's nothing to it. It's like tone deaf. It's uh, awful. No, this sounds beautiful. This is amazing, the sound. I despise bass, but dear Christ, this sounds epic. It is so good. One of the best bass players one of the best bass songs i guess because i'd never hear anything like this this is incredible and then from a lyrical standpoint uh the girl has landed so she's uh walking through the halls of uh, this uh alien planet and uh she uh, comes into contact with the everones uh, the other owns, uh, I don't kind of like how they're done because it's like um, a male kind of choir who kind of sings uh, uh, for on the behalf of the ever owns. So it's like, welcome to our sacred halls. And it's like, I, I don't really kind of like that kind of choir kind of thing that they do. Uh, although I do understand why, because it's obviously, it's she's like seeing the um, government of ever owns or something like that. Um, so I, I get that. Uh, the girl is actually, instead of being sung by uh, Tommy, because obviously Tommy's the vocalist, so he does have to sing on the behalf of most, the everyone, the human race, the mother and the girl, uh, they do actually bring a, a female voice in to basically sing um, for uh, Tiara. So they welcome her and obviously want to uh, know what she has to say. And when it goes over to the girl... Um, She's now left with basically, uh, she now has to say that the human race is good. That uh, they don't lie, they tell the truth. Uh, they're great and they and all of this and they, they're like that and blah, 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 blah. But as she says in the uh, last moments of this track, um, I've been brought up not to lie. 
that lying is wrong. And as you got in against the grain, uh, the first thing, to, uh, the first line in against the grain is uh, basically stop lying. So she knows humanity lies. She has been taught not to lie. She believes in truth and she's the one. She's been used because she is the innocent, uh, purest of humanity. So she shouldn't lie then. Because lying is wrong. Lying is the reason why they're in this mess to begin with. And uh, she's against lying and she's taught that lying is wrong. So, the last line is, um, my truth. My voice, my truth. And then, um, it ends on an actual girl's voice, so not uh, the person singing, which is a woman who sings for Tiara, but uh, the song ends on a girl just saying, I couldn't do it. So, clearly she's told the truth. She's told the truth that uh, humanity are a bunch of dicks. Uh, she probably didn't put it exactly like that. I would be surprised if she did. Just this little girl, like, uh, what is it, my child? Uh, yeah, humanity are a bunch of dicks. It'd be hilarious if she did, but <laughs> I doubt it. So uh, we, now we get to the track uh, by the light of the funeral pyres. So uh, this might be the heaviest uh, track and uh, the fastest, perhaps. Because um, it's kind of like the most aggressive for what's uh, going on now. So um, what's happening is basically um, the aliens have come and they're raining down hellfire on humanity. So uh, the chorus is like, um, run, run, uh, run for your life, the kingdom's uh, burning. But um, the first verse is just like so aggressive. It's like a betrayal. Uh, we've been betrayed. Um, look at all of this. So it's like uh, the, the first portion of uh, Tommy is um, what I think is basically just uh, the world, uh, the people, uh, just hating Tiara because they've been betrayed. She didn't help them. Uh, she's made them come down and kill them, uh, technically. So uh, they feel betrayed. They hate her. Then it goes to the mother's side, who is basically like, I don't care. All I care about is the fact that uh, my girl has been returned to me. And then it's like, look at what you've done. Look at the people uh, run, run, run for your life. The kingdom's burning. So it's like, look, Tiara, look at the world burn. This is on you. So pretty aggressive, to be honest, the fact that uh, this girl's just told the truth, which is what the aliens have wanted from the start. And her own people have now turned against her because they want her to lie. So, the weight of the world, the world burning now and being blamed, it's really just terrible, terrible stuff. Uh, obviously, solos come back here. Uh, the solos are great. Uh, the musicianship is phenomenal. There's so much going on. Uh, Tommy sounds great. The chorus were fight, fight, fight for your life. The kingdom's burning. Um, it's just super um, amazing. And then the uh, kind of verse. Again, there's so much keys to it, um, which is throughout the album. There is a lot of emphasis on keys to give it that kind of, you know, sci-fi feel, um, one would guess. Um, but... Um, this is incredible, it's just so upbeat and uh, so energetic. And even though it's still got that lightness to it and the kind of keys and everything, as I say, it is kind of like the most um, aggressive sounding song. So um, going into uh, Damnation um, Below, um, this is uh, basically uh, the aliens uh, asking um, humanity um, what they've done. So um, a lot of uh, basically um, humanity kind of saying um, still like oh with this with that uh, the girl betrayed us and then the ever own saying um, you sent a girl to us. So the aliens are even on Tiara's side basically like you sent her to us alone. Like you sent her alone and you know what she did it. She did it alone. She stood before us and she told us the truth. She wasn't bullied into lying for us. She wasn't scared of coming. 
all of this on her, this little girl, and she did it. So technically, they should be ashamed of themselves. So they feel even worse. It's like, on top of all of this, you've done this to uh, Tiara for crying out loud. All we want is for you to tell the truth. And you've been complete and utter dicks again. So in the aftermath of all of this, it's like, um, basically, uh, kind of like a court thing. So um, I don't know if it's in this track of Procession, but um, there is a part where it's basically uh, getting along the fact that uh, humanity is brought uh, to the Everones uh, person by person. And they have to basically admit to their truth. The people who understand their wrongdoings, understand the issue and the problem, um, there is hope for them because they get it. So they survive. And then I believe the people who don't get it are killed, basically. So um, that's it, which again is a religious kind of thing, which is basically at the en in the end of days, uh, can you forgive your sins? Can you understand your problems? If not, uh, you go to hell. And if you do, you go to heaven. So it, again, it does run them uh, parallels. Um, so, uh, yeah, there is that. Um, but again, Damnation Below, um, I think, is still quite a dark, kind of heavy track uh, for this album. Procession um, is very short, actually, uh, which um, is either the kind of court thing or it's basically uh, saying humanity um, has learned. So Procession is basically like, uh, you now see yourself for what you are. We see humanity for what it is which is, it is a mess. Uh, there are issues, uh, there is a lot of things we need to fix, there's a lot of things we need to do in order to be better. So, uh, there's that. So, um, Exhale, this is where it kind of does lose me, so this is the final track now. And I believe they go to the alien planet um, to uh, live with the Everones, and it's like, this is our second chance. Earth uh, is uh, basically just, like, doomed. Uh, we've uh, destroyed that. But in the song, there is a section which is basically like, uh, did she twitch? And it's like, I remain hopeful. So, did Tiara die? This is the thing I'm not really sure about, and I, I, I've tried looking through, like, where did she die? So I don't know if she died in by the light of the funeral pies because obviously uh, humanity was being very aggressive to her for telling the truth and betraying them because uh, uh, they're a bunch of dicks. Um, so, yeah, uh, I don't know if humanity killed her. I don't know if they killed the girl. It's just like, well, you've killed all of us, so uh, what's killing a little girl, really? If I'm going to die, I may as well kill an eight-year-old. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I won't put it past them, like, uh, on, honestly, if it does come to uh, humanity's last days, you can imagine that happening probably a hell of a loss. I can believe that. And I'm sure a lot of people could, yet we don't think of it constantly. But the fact that you actually do believe it, like, crying out loud, the fact that you actually do think that if uh, humanity had the chance, they would just literally start killing kids. God. Um, so, uh... Yeah, uh, I don't know if she dies. Obviously, the fact that it's just a did she twitch? I don't know. Like, is Tiara actually a girl? Like, at times I've tried to think of it as is Tiara Mother Nature? So, like, Tiara is the purest nature uh, Mother Earth kind of character represented as a little girl. I mean, because all of the innocence and in the earth has kind of been stripped bare, um, has, you know, like Mother Earth kind of shriveled to an extent. Which is why it's like, did she twitch? It's like a girl's body that they have with them, but is dead but twitched, and maybe she's kind of alive. Seems a little weird to me. So I don't know if it's like Mother Nature, like the world twitches, like uh, there is another chance of you know, like, like life in the next stand. So yeah, I, I don't know if Tiara is a real girl or if Tiara is a representation of Earth. 
despite the purest innocence which Earth is. I'm not sure. So again, this is kind of where it kind of loses me. Because um, obviously, uh, again, they kind of sent her to uh, the planet, didn't they? Which would be like sending dirt, which wouldn't make any sense to talk. And then it's like, my truth. So again, that wouldn't make sense. But again, the girl can still be a representation of Earth without actually being figuratively the actual Earth, if you get me. So, um, yeah, the girl represents Earth, but isn't actually the Earth. Well, she's not a pile of mud or anything. Um, it's just a representation. Um, so uh, that is the story. So uh, Earth did kind of fail in the end, but um, the ones who chose to admit to their issues get a second chance to basically rebuild on their problems so uh there's that so uh, that is the uh, concept story of uh, seven wonder tiara and the album so overall um i do really like the concept uh the bassist uh, throughout is fantastic the musicianship constantly is fantastic uh you do get uh, as i say two maybe three tracks about solos where it's not really that big a deal to me because, as I said, um, Beyond Today is just such a beautiful song. And um, I'm just so engrossed into the story that um, I can kind of actually forget about it. Uh, the Truth um, is relatively short. Again, it's very beautiful. Um, still, great melodies from uh, Tommy's vocal work. Uh, Beyond Today and The Truth, Tommy is just absolutely incredible. Um, the latter part, um, again, when the Eberones kind of speak, uh, loses me a little bit. But um, again, I don't mind. And then by the light of the funeral pies, when it picks it up and it's just super fast and the uh, keys are just going blistering in the intro. And then uh, before Tommy gets in, now uh, you've got like leads of bass, which is like going incredibly fast. I don't even know if the guitarist is in there. Because it's just so much bass, so much speed, it's insane. But that's the thing, the fact is, as I said at the beginning, uh, the album is so accessible because it's so upbeat, catchy, cheerful, a great vocal work. But if you look deeper, there is fast bass, there is lead work going on throughout, there is the actual concept story that you can get into, there is the vocals which uh, have key chains, pitch shifts, emotion, um, all sorts of things. Um, a lot of kind of singing in headspace. Uh, he never really sings with a lot of tension on his vocal cords or... Um, anything like that uh, from what I've uh, guessed everything is very clean in his uh, vocal performance but he does do the kind of like high notes the soft notes the melodies different kind of keys and pitches and everything um, so from the vocal uh, performance uh, you can go throughout this album and pick up so many uh, intricate things that Tommy does even with the guitar stuff uh, there are tracks where the guitarist just keeps going and he does lead throughout. Then you've got the actual solos, and then the keys are constantly there throughout. The bass doesn't do anything simple. His stuff, even if he is doing rhythm, is complicated because he's using fingers instead of a pick, which is incredibly hard. Gifted guitarists, if they had to not use the pick and go to fingers, would be bloody difficult. Although it would be, because there's less gaps, isn't there? Um, but yeah, the fact that uh, the track The Truth is uh, purely led by bass, like. Oh. And then you got a uh, kind of like bass solos at sections and points where the bass does break out. The keys, the story, there is so much going on. So it's a unique album because it's that uh, bright and upbeat and cheerful, even though technically, lyrically, uh, the concept is very dark and also uh, has a lot of truth to it at the same time. So it's dark, yet it's bright. It's just so weird in that way. But uh, yeah, rating the album, I'd give it um, an 8.5. It's a great album. Um, musically great. Uh, the voice is great lyrically. The concept is fantastic. I don't think you can really go wrong on this one. <laughs> 